Shalom Aleichem, friends. Thank you for being with us. We'll get to this background in just a second. Uh, in the meantime, just sing with me, please, everyone. So, you might be wondering, for those of you that are watching us, as opposed to those that are listening, but if you're watching us, you're wondering, what's what's behind you? Drumroll. Look out, you, look, what's the virtual background? So, this is just a little bit of a glimpse into the beauty and the light and the work of, uh, from the life of someone that we're dedicating tonight's year to. And the ceramics that you see behind us, behind me, is me priya da of our dear friend, whose fourth yard site is tonight, Bracha Schwartz, Aleha Shalom. Bracha was a very close friend of my family, my, my wife's family, my family, our family, and continues to, to be a, a dear friend in our hearts. Bracha was, is, light, life, color, dreams, beauty, excitement. Um, Bracha loved learning. Every time we, we, would, we would learn together something, uh, we would learn the shir, the next day she would always, always comment and mention something about the learning that really moved her and touched her. But to me, Bracha was someone that, um, and still is, I, keep, I don't want to say it in past tense, but someone that is still so clear about the need to make this world more beautiful and to live to live, to live your life. So tonight is our fourth year outside, like I mentioned, and I want to give a, I just send all my love to Shalom and, and to the children, to, to the children, to the grandchildren, 
and to all her friends from the Moshev. And uh, for those of you that don't, uh, that didn't get to meet her, I want to sing for you. Well, first we'll put a picture of Bracha for this next song. And this is a nigan that Reb Shlomo wrote for, um, for Shalom and Brachas Tznaim. Many of you know this nigan, but it's their nigan. And uh, we thank you, Hashem, for the for the privilege of knowing someone like this. So this is the nigan that Reb Shlomo wrote for Brachas Tznaim the Shalom. friends as we were singing this song Bracha was a queen Bracha was a queen um, what I mean by that is I've, I never had, I never experienced a Malava Malka in my life like I did with Bracha and it was a Malave Malka it was Motzei Shabbos and Bracha had already um decided that, that she, there were a few people she wanted to, to make sure that were around her while she was being escorted to the next world through song and had the privilege to be in her room next to her bed for this Melave Malka, this like escorting of the, of the queen. And that's what we felt. It was like escorting the queen to the next world. And, um, it's hard for me to even think about it. Uh, without <laughs> just talking about it. Uh, here's another piece of Bracha's beautiful work. Um, but you could find it online. Um, <clears throat> we were sitting around her bedside, the Motzei Shabbos, singing Nigun after Nigun after Nigun. And um, this is one of the songs we sang. So we'll sing this Nigun, then we'll start learning. Just this. Erev Shabbos Bo. It's a very special Shabbos. When we sang this nigga, it felt like uh, it, it already happened. Amashia, Bevias Amashia, Ani 
מאמין, אני מאמין באמונה שלמה, באמונה שלמה, בביאה המשיח, בביאה המשיח. ואף על פי שישמעמיה עם כל זה אחכה לו ואף על פי שישמעמיה עם כל זה אחכה לו די 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 We love you so much. <coughs> All right, friends, we are we are honored and thankful to always have the opportunity to learn together. And tonight we're going back to a Sefer that we began in the beginning of the year, but we haven't been able to learn the last few weeks only because there, are no Torahs, there were no Torahs in the previous parashiyot. But we're back with the Beis Avram of Slonim. Um, we got hold of a few of the copies of these. Whoever needs, whoever would like to purchase, give me be in touch with me and we'll let you know how to get it. We began learning the Sefer earlier this year, and it's just mesmerizingly beautiful and deep. And you understand, after learning this, where the Nesir was shown was like, you know, the, the, the last Lama where Rebbe where it was drawing from. So we're going to continue with two beautiful short pieces in Parsha's bow. And all the words tonight, and all the davening, and the nigunim, and the love, and the energy, it's all Lilu Nishmad Bracha. And I saw this, this is a Sefer called Siach Yaakov Yosef, Siach Yaakov Yosef. I picked this up a few years ago. I wasn't looking for it, but it, it was it was looking for me. <laughs> and I've been I've been loving the Sefer from the Spinker Rebbe. And he he says here in Pasha's boy number something really beautiful that I wanted to uh, open with about the uniqueness of this Shabbos Shabbos bow. Shabbos bow in many of the Hasidic courts is like a big yantiv Shabbos. Um, it, it has its own chen, has its own unique beauty that um, I'm sure it's clear to all where it's coming from, but I wanted to read from here where he says that it's known that in Parsha's bow, all these different hashpa'ot, all these different energies, uh, beautiful energies that are coming down to Am Yisrael uh, are similar to the ones that come down on the first night of Pesach on Leil Seder, because this is what we read in Parsha's bow. We read about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And the previous Binker Rebbe once said that there was one year Pasha's bow after Kabbalah Shabbos that the Heiliger of Maisha Leib of Sansov started saying Hallel. And right away, the Zidachover, the Ateas Tzvi of Tzvihesh Zidachover, got so enthusiastic that he jumped up on a table and started saying Hallel with so much passion. And it was clear that they were, they were smelling the matzahs, they were smelling the Haggadah of Pesach, it was there already. So it means that even though it's not Pesach this Shabbos, but the, when when you read, it's a klal that's brought down in other svarim as well. Reb Moshe Wolfson speaks about this in Amunah that when a, when a, when a person reads the Torah, what they're reading comes to life. So even though it's not Pesach, because we're not celebrating Pesach this Shabbos, what we're reading comes to life. So I want us to to go and to jump into this very sweet. In short teaching from the base of Ram, I'll pull it up in a second on the screen. And I think that I won't have to explain too much, because um, the words speak for themselves, how this really ties in to the Baal Tidula, to the Bracha, and to the work that we, we're believing more and more. There I say we, hopefully I'm included in that, we're believing more and more that we're capable of doing. And we'll sing a little bit more too. So, this is from the Beis Avram, and we'll do. We'll read it slowly, slowly. 
it's not too difficult, but it's, there's a few words to make sure we get. Vayomer Hashem alav, El Moshe bo el paro. It's the beginning of the parasha. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, come to paro. And the initial first question on the language here was, is pretty well known. Hatoldos hiksha dehavele lomar lechel paro. The toldos, I think it's the toldos Yaakov Yosef, he says, well, it should have said, lech el paro, go to paro. Why is God saying, come to paro? So this is like a very, uh, you know, just <clears throat> on a pshat level, obviously if you say to somebody, come, come here, that means I'm here and come with me. So is God saying, I'm at paro, come to paro? Uh, we don't usually associate uh, things like that. So it's very interesting why the Torah says, lech el paro. So the Slonimer here is going to explain to us, wait, 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 who's Moshe, who's Paro, what's Lech, what's Bo? The Pashtut Nochalomai, third line. Ki ha-Torah hi the Torah is eternal. V'shayechet b'chol adam. Every word the Torah said is shayech to every person in every generation. To you and I, today. Tavshin Pe Aleph. 5781, January 2021. When this Pasuk was said back then, it was thinking about you and I. That's basically, that's one of the Yesodos of Emunah. That's a function that must be crystallized and sharpened every year whenever we learn anything from the Torah. What's Moshe? Moshe hu bechinas das sheba Adam. Knowledge, the aspect of that, is Moshe Rabbeinu that's, that's alive in each and every one of us. Paro, otiot ha'oref. Paro is the same letters as ha'oref, the, the neck, the back of the neck. That's what paro is. What's, so what, what is that place? Shesham ba'oref, mekom hitkashrut ha'moach imale ve'aguf. This back of my neck is the place where my intellect connects to the rest of me, to my heart and to the rest of my body. This is the medium. This is the memutza. This is the middle player. This is the connector. Vesham here, mekor ha'teavot v'retichot ha'damim. It's also the source of all lusts and the boiling of blood. So we'll we'll get to that in a second. Like this place over here, I guess, when your blood begins to boil, so you could feel it, it gets all clogged up over here, in the back of the neck. This is what makes you an Am or if it's what makes you a stiff-necked person. The Gam who neged mekom hachech. It's also um, corresponding to the place of the palate, the chech, right here to here. Hachech ki ma'amar akatu vechech ochel itam lo. That's a pasuk from Eov. That the first place that a person tastes uh, what they're what they digest, what they're taking in, is through the palate. Beseder. That's paro, that's ha'oref. That's where things are. So he continues over here and he says, Uchshadamim nir tachim midvarim gasim. And when the blood is becomes boiled from things that are gas, that are prust, al yedezeh unasek she'oref. This is how you become a stiff-necked person. So what you and I have to realize is that this place of paro, of ha'oref, it's the boiling point. It's the place where things can go either way. Like he says right now, When a person does what's called a birur, clarifying in their seichel, in their dat, that this is not the purpose of creation, meaning I have a, a burning desire, a lust for something that comes inside of me, and it completely over, you know, takes me over and convinces me that that which I'm feeling is is what I should get. That's without that. I'm led to that place so fast. I'm led to that place because I'm under the assumption if I'm feeling it, it must mean that it's for me. Without getting to Ishbitz right now, but just saying it on a, on a slonim level. The slonim Rebbe is saying, and... and Really, in the Ishbitzer level, he's also saying, Birur, the, the Seichel, the mind, 
enables us to take what comes into the place of, of the blood where it makes us boil and asks ourselves, is this worth it? Like tachlis. Is this the tachlis of Bria? Is this the purpose of your creation? Is this the purpose that God, for which God created the world? No. And look at the bottom line here. There are things that are sweeter in the world. There are things that are better than whatever I think this this can this lust can fulfill in me. So he continues and he says, The nature of a person is to seek out and ask for words of taste and sweetness. How do we do that? So then a person takes this das, this Moshe Rabbeinu, this shtikl Moshe Rabbeinu that I have in me, and I place it into the machshava shebalev, this is very Lubavitch, I put this into the thought that's in my heart, with that, like, uh, it's this mayach, like, what, what kind of makes sense to me now, that, of what tachlis is, when I, when I calm myself down, and I pause, and I want to pay attention to what's, what's ikar and what's tafel in life. I say, this is not worth it. What is worth it? I fill in the blank, on a dot level, on a Moshe Rabbeinu level. I go to my heart, that's after I did the Bureau of Paro, right? I go to, I, then I go to my heart, after I did the biru, this clarification, this sifting through what life's all about, I placed that knowledge in my heart. And from the heart, it then spreads forth to all limbs until it causes me to play a, a, a lemaisa, a role in action. So, okay, that was a lot of talk, but let me just try to say this again. Just you got to just visualize this. You have the dot, your mind. You have the oref, the back of your neck. And you have your heart and the rest of your body. And what happens is sometimes the, the mind may know something. But what, what the boiling of the blood that takes place in the, in the oref, in the paro, is so convincing that I, have, I feel like I have no control. But if I use my maishir abbeinu, if I use my dot, to try to understand what's the point of life. Is it to just succumb to what naturally feels so good because I have such a passion for it on a lust level? When I'm capable, when I'm when I'm conscious enough, and when my desire is strong enough to use my Maishir Rabbeinu, which you and I have, and each and each and every one of us has, the Da'at, we then send that Da'at into the thoughts that go on in the heart, and then from the heart, it spreads to the limbs, and the limbs bring about action. So now, he's going to go back to begin to explain the beginning of this piece. Listen to this. This is so simple, but so beautiful. God speaks to what? To Moshe, to the Bechina of Da'at, to the aspect of knowledge. And what does he tell our knowledge? He says, Bo el paro, go to this place to the place of the back of the neck. Bring that, bring that which you know once you've used your faculties of your mind, once you use those things that you know to be emet and to be worth fighting for. Bring it to the place that a few minutes ago was trying to convince you on a lust level that it's worth to just fall into. That when you do this, you soften up the aspect of being a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people can go either way. It can be beautiful that we're so stingy, we're so uh, pers- persistent, and we, we're such akshanim, we're so stubborn that we want good in, good in the world. But quite often that place of being stiff-necked you know, prevented us from, from a lot of beautiful things in this world. Painfully enough, it prevents us from being able to like go outside, zoom out, look at the bigger picture, and remember what the purpose of life is all about. And then when you do that, 
you're able to, like he said over here, ask for more sweetness. So I highly recommend, if you'd like, I would highly recommend to find online Bracha's life story. She, uh, I thank our friend Leah Silver, who did a beautiful job interviewing Bracha, documenting her, where she gives over her whole life story, where you see how she describes that moment in life or those moments leading up to that decision to look at the tachlit of her bria, to look at the purpose of her creation in this world. And you see her connect to the bechina of dat, of Moshe Rabbeinu, put it into the machshavas and the heart, and then she was just, on a level of action, she was, she was an artist. She was a doer, she's a creator, making the world more beautiful, softening, the harshness, you know, I, I never forget it. And Bracha's, um, that Moda'at Avelut, the morning, that, you know, that, um, the sign that, that says, you know, the people, the person's name, and when the Levaya is, where the Shiva is, it's always, you know, black letters over white with like a, a black surrounding. And I, I don't know who did it. I would love to find out who did it, but on Bracha's Moda'at Avel, that was, when she passed away, it was all colors. It was not that God forbid her leaving the world is, a, is it actually was the most colorful way of leaving the world, but not God forbid that we're not we weren't mourning, it wasn't a mourning, but that who she was, is, and will always be for us is metikut, is sweetness, is colors, is more beautiful. And this is what the parsha is saying. Hashem and Moshe bo el paro. God is telling that place inside of us that's willing to stop, to think about what life is really all about, go to the orif, go to the back of the neck where the blood boils, get a hold of life before life on its own gets a hold of you and send out that love back to the heart, back to the thoughts, and you'll, you'll realize how much you, who you really are is a totza'a, is a result of this softening of the neck, which we all need so much today to soften, soften that kshe oyref. So that was the first piece. I would like to also do the second piece that you see over here. And when Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu to go to Paro, he says, don't worry. It was me the whole time that was that was hardening his heart. Ki ani et libo. I was hardening Paro's heart. I was putting the weight on him that every time that you, you Moshe and Aaron went to him and told him, let my people go. And some of the times he said yes, and then he said no. So what was what's that about? And without getting too philosophical, and you know, the, obviously the whole the debate about free will, and it always comes to this: to what you know, how do we understand Paro's role in that? So we're going to see something over here, something so beautiful. It's a short little title. Kiani chabadati et libo. I have hardened his heart. B'shem Tzadikim, it's brought down by the Tzadikim, that when David HaMelech says, in Tehidim, sur merav asetov, refrain from, from bad and do good. Go away from doing bad and involve yourself in doing good. So the Slonim says like this, shelifamim be'et shirotze la'asot davar tov, sometimes when a person has a desire to do something good, ba ha'yetze hara, u'ma'amid lefanav harim gvohim, Mikol ha'ma'asim ha'ra'im she'asa. What does Be'ed Zahara come? It brings your, your averas that you've done before, and it makes it seem like they are huge mountains of, of, of horrible things that you've done. Like, literally, it means it's taking, you know, the little, maybe like something bad you did, but it's putting it right in front of your eyes that to you, you can't see anything else other than what it's highlighting uh, right in front of you. So that's a, obviously a, <laughs> that's a big problem because what does that cause? That obviously causes a person to right away feel like, if this is what I'm up against, then who am I kidding? Nothing's going to help me, right? So he continues over here and he says like this, The Yitzhar is not bringing up your schmutz in order to help you do, to, to, drive you to do tshuva over your past, what it really wants to do is prevent you from the good thing that you're about to do. 
convincing you that it's not worth it. It's not who you really are. This is who you really are. And even if you've had a little bit of a frum attack, this is not going to make a difference when you have this heavy load of your past behind you. So he continues in the third line here, the base of Ram, and he says, V'zeo sur mira b'she'at va'asetov. At the time that you're busy, or you want to be busy doing something good, at that time, davka, sur mira. Meaning, she'tzarich liyot az k'mishelo asara me'olam. When you are in, when you are engaged in holiness, when you are engaged in a prayer, when you are engaged in opening your heart to someone or having someone open their heart to you, the Slonim is saying David Amelach meant Dafka at that time of the Asay Tov Sur Mera. It's not a process of first be holy, first first Sur Mera, first refrain from anything bad, then Asay Tov. It's dafka at the same time. Shetzarich liot az kemi shelo asara meolam at that moment, while you're while you're engaged and busy doing a mitzvah, doing something good. There's there's no reason to take any look at what the yitzhar is coming to put in front of you. V'zehu. Now he's going to go back to the pasuk. Ki ani hichbadeti et libo. I have strengthened his heart. I have hardened. His heart. Shegam ha-hachbada hi me'et Hashem. It's an amazing thing. He's saying over here that this presentation that the Yetzirah is doing at that moment, that you want to do something holy, that's also from Hashem. Because why Hashem wants you to look right through it and not see it at all. Kedei she'yitgaber lifrotz u'leshaver ha-masachim. So that you can literally uh, break through any dividing screen right then and there. You know, it happens to us. I, I once, you know, one of my dear friends told me, he's like, the weirdest thing is that Dafka, when he chooses to dive in his heart out, he feels that the Yitzhahara comes and plays scenes before him of stuff he's done or stuff he's seen. And it's as if God is saying, Who are you kidding? No one's interested in this in its fila that can be tainted with such thoughts and images. But here the Slonim Rebbe is saying, That's like Hashem. Hardening Paro's heart to look right through it. Bo Eli, come through, come through me to come through that to me because I'm on the other side. God is saying, margalit yekara hayam. It's like some precious stone which is somewhere, which is found somewhere in the bottom of the ocean. even kveda meod, and upon this margalit is a very heavy rock. You need, you need really intense, hard labor in order to crack that stone, to to crack that heavy rock until you find the pearl. And we should all be zochet to feel this. When a person sees that their heart is hard as rock. Zeu siman sheyesh tamun margalit veotzar yakar. That's just a simon. That beneath that hard rock is a precious, precious treasure. Is a precious, precious pearl. So, the connection between what I found in these two teachings is the concept of something that may seem to you to be hard. Kshe'oref, when you're when the neck is stiff, and when the heart, he says, when the lev is even, when the heart is also like hard like a rock. These rebbes, these Torahs that we live on, are giving us strength to not pretend or work on visualizations and go to go to a zone where you're trying so hard to remove what you're what you're dealing with, but it's dafka to go right through it. To go right through it and one thing's for sure is that when you're around people that have done that in their life that's probably the most influential than any you know that that's more influential than any teaching we can learn about how to do it is just being around people that have done it that have gone there that have stopped that have taken a breath that have looked at the purpose of their creation that have believed that even if at times they feel like their heart is heart is hard as a rock 
they remember the Slonim Rebbe said, that's a simon, that itself is a simon, that beneath that heavy heart, Boel Paro, come with me to there, because I, Hashem is saying, me, I'm underneath that rock. I just want you to look straight through it. So, let's sing one more, Nigan, in honor of Brach, in honor of Parshas Bo, in honor of Reb Moshe Lid of Sasavir, saying Halel, maybe we'll sing a Nigan from Halel. Um, maybe it's a Chayaf Nigan. Anyway, thank you, friends. Thank you for being with us. If you'd like to help us sponsor these programs, we can continue going strong. Tavo Alechem HaBracha. Join us on the WhatsApp groups. We have a lot more to learn and a lot more love to feel and give. So uh, this is a nigga from Halo, which will help us, I think, <coughs> with these teachings. Thank you.